time to get up and get going. 8.23 on a Wednesday morning, everybody. 66 degrees. Okay, collecting Halloween candy is the fun part. But for parents, deciding how much and when is kind of tough. Should there be rules around it? Well, Jenny McLaughlin specializes in childhood feeding. She works at the UT Dallas Callier Center for Communication Disorders and joins us now. Good morning. Good morning. I want to also mention that you are the author of Helping Your Child with Extreme Picky Eating because your, your title is very long and complex, <laughs> but the title of your book will uh, let parents know, yeah. <laughs> you know, sort of what we're talking about here. So in terms of uh, candy consumption, a lot of parents will say, okay, you're allowed this much at this time. Do you recommend that? Is that a good idea? You know, Halloween in particular is hard for parents because they think, oh, well, if the child has a lot of sugar, they're going to be hyper. It's going to affect their behavior. You know, everything's going to kind of snowball from there. And actually, there's 30 years of good research that says no, that that sugar high is a myth, that it actually doesn't cause hyperactivity. Um, and so they've done really nice controlled studies to show us that that's not the case. And for Halloween, you know, it's some kids favorite holiday. They love it. They think it's so much fun and they get their candy down and they want to gloat over it and sort it and find all their favorites. And then if it gets taken away, it just kind of spoils the fun. Okay, so back to that original question regarding should you limit it. Are, is that a no? That's a no. Okay. So for on Halloween night, if we let the kids just have their fill, it's kind of interesting. I let my own kids do this and they stop. They stop. They kind of have their own limits and, and that restriction makes it more Appe appealing. They like it better if it's restricted. Well, because isn't it true that we're born with natural hunger cues? Sure. Uh, and we know your, your body tells you. Then in adult life, we're sort of told all these stories about what you should and shouldn't eat. And mm -hmm. does that ruin your, your natural cues? Yeah, and kids, um, young kids especially, have their own energy regulation. They absolutely manage that. And we want kids to learn to manage sweets and to manage treats and to be able to, you know, eat them in moderation. And so if we teach them to manage those things early on, then they're better able to do that as adults. And by teaching it, you don't mean limiting it, you mean letting them figure it out. Letting them figure it out and giving them the opportunities to figure it out. And so if they, on Halloween night, if they eat their fill and they have a great time and you're not worried about it and then after the next you know few days you kind of help them manage it so you have it only at meals and snack times a couple of pieces and then if the child is unable to manage that and they're gorging then you say you know we're gonna have it at meals and snack time and that's mm -hmm. it and then you help them understand that as they get older they're better at it what about the kid that wants to like hoard it and keep it in their room and keep it in the bag for the rest of the year? Yeah, and I'm really a proponent that, you know, generally speaking, we as adults, the parents are in charge of the when and the where of when food happens. So food needs to stay in the kitchen and we need to have it in the kitchen and the parents are in charge of presenting it and having it available. In the room, it, it, that triggers something that mm -hmm. we know, okay, they're probably being forbidden, those foods, and so they want to hoard them and keep them. And research shows that too that girls who are restricted, they eat more forbidden foods later, even when they're not hungry, and those children end up to be heavier. Children that are not restricted end up being thinner and manage their sweets more, more traditionally. Because they don't feel like it's completely out of the question to have right. a treat It's not on the pedestal. Okay, oh, yeah. interesting how you're yeah. just kind of changing the mindset around right. it. Right, right. It's just like everything else, and you have it in moderation, and then it's not such a big deal. Okay, and you said you do this with your kids, Yeah, too. we actually serve dessert with dinner, and sometimes they don't eat it at all. Because they're just full, and they just yeah. listen to their bodies. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I guess adults can learn something from that, too. Sure, absolutely. We have, we have just so many things about feeding that our society doesn't really help us understand, because our culture says, oh, you can't eat this. Right, this is bad. it's bad. Yeah. Right, and, so, and, and, and kids learn that, and it's really difficult for them to separate, am I bad? if I eat this food, and so we don't right. want that. We want them to learn to manage it and to be able to um, cope when there's you know, a ton of treats out sure. and learn that, you know what, I don't always want sweets. I want other food too. Okay, well look at Halloween as, a, as an educational day, it I guess. It is, it's Jenny an opportunity. McLaughlin, thank you so much. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Well, you will find a link to the Callier Center on our website so you can get more information at fox4news.com.